Okay, so now we've dealt with the objects on top of the playfield, we're going to look at the playfield itself. Um, so what we want to do is we want to start cutting holes in the playfield. Um, there used to be ways of doing it in VPX, where well, there still are, but they're not as good as making it physically accurate. So first of all, find out what holes you've got to cut. So looking at your reference images, you've got a good idea where the ball has to fall through. Now we're only interested in the places the ball can go through. So like we want these three, but we don't want these, which are the lights and wiring and screw holes and stuff. We only care about where the ball's going to fall through. So you go to your VPX, you deselect everything. Then you go to File, Export, Object Mesh, and you export that. And you go and open up Blender. Get rid of everything that's on here. File, Import, Wavefront Object. Then you go to Import your object you've just done. Zoom right out. I have to click on this view to give me the full sight of the playfield. This is your playfield. This is a 3D primitive of your playfield at the moment, which is just blank. So we open up another window, go to Shader Editor. So this is so we can see what we're doing. I'm zooming through this, so you might have to go back and watch this again. Add texture, image texture. Add the color to the base color, the alpha to the alpha. That's new on the latest version of Blender, unless I've done something wrong that's messed the settings up. Go and get your playfield image. Okay. Click on UV editor. Go back here, click on viewport shading. So now this is our playfield. Go to edit mode. Press A to select all. You'll see that now populates the UV map. Now we want to get rid of this line across the middle because that's in the way. So you go up to face with that with the whole thing selected, face, rise to quads, and that gets rid of that. The next thing we want to do to make our life easier later on is cut the playfield up into sections. So we go to loop cut, this one here, and when you drag down the edge, it will. if you put your cursor on the edge, you will see this line going across the middle. So we need to click and hold down the mouse key and we can move that up and down. Because what we want to do is we want to divide it up into um, easily manageable chunks. So we're going to put one there, one there. You don't want any of these going through the holes. One there, one there. Back this to the side there. Back this to the side there. Make that one there. And that's probably enough. You can go down more if you want. Depends how complicated the table is. But generally that's probably enough. We might do one there as well. Do. That'll do. So then you click go back to object mode. So this is your playfield now um, done up into manageable chunks. So what we need to do is we need to go make sure you're in object mode, add, mesh. Now I use cylinders. So you click that, it's made a cylinder there, but it's so small you can't see because these are big objects. So I click scale, the white bit around the edge, and you drag that out to make it bigger. Now what we need to do is we need to zoom in, then go to here, now if you, the side view, now it's facing the wrong way. Um, so you click rotate, we want to rotate it so it's upright. If you click control while you're rotating, it puts it in stages. So now that's a cylinder facing upright. Why a cylinder, you ask? I will show you. So click movable. And we're going to drag it to um, one of the holes. If you 
if you have it at uh, the right viewport angle uh, on a reference, when you move it, if you click the little square, it moves it around that plane so you don't have to worry. If you move it using something else, it might make it a bit weird. So what we can do is we can scale this to make it a little bit smaller. Move it so it fits in the corner. That will do. Then we click edit and then oh, make sure we have X-ray selected up here. Then drag. Oh, that's it. I don't want to loop cut it. Then drag a box around a quarter of them. Click move. Drag them over there. Click another quarter. This is the easiest way I found to do it. Drag another quarter. Yeah. Right. So now we have click object mode. So now we've got our shape in the middle. Right. Object mode, click the play field. You want to go down to the spanner modifiers. Click add modifier, generate boolean. Click the little dropper and then click on what you want to take away from the play field. So in this case, the click on the cylinder. Make the solver fast. I don't know what the difference is, but fast seems to work better than exact. I don't know why. I don't know what it means. If you make the cylinder invisible by clicking the eye, it shows you we've got our hole. But that's not permanent. So once we've decided, once we've figured out that that's what we want, we click this little arrow and apply and that has now made that hole permanent now what we can do is we can click this object that we made our cylinder which is no longer a cylinder if you press shift d you duplicate it we can drag that up there we can then just rotate it and if you make sure you're choosing the colors so it only wrote it only uh, deals with those uh, axes doesn't move in 3d space did then move these out again same thing so you just go through and you do this um, with all if you if you've got funky shaped objects this takes longer squares are obviously smaller these circles are easy because you just use the cylinder so go here click the play field again add modifier generate boolean select that click fast apply make the two cylinders thing so now we've got two holes cut so you go around and you do this the rest of the play field once you've finished you click edit mode select all Make sure the whole thing's selected. Go to face, triangulate. And that gives you these little boxes. Now that's the reason we split the playfield up into manageable chunks. Because otherwise, if you just had the four corners, you end up with these horrible lines. And if you have too many of them, um, it can actually affect the physics. So, object mode. This is our fully triangulated and finished playfield even though I've not cut all the holes out yet. Um, it's difficult to go back and cut more holes out once you've done that triangulation. So what you would do is you'd go back and um, do tries to quads again. So file, export, wavefront object. And then we're going to click limit to selected only. We're going to call this... Um, SSPF mesh, so scared to this playfield mesh. Export wavefront. Okay, then we open. Well, we're not open. We got VPX back up, so we're going to make a new layer and call it PF mesh. 
make sure it's selected, click insert primitive, import mesh, browse, playfield mesh, import. Go to position and make these 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then, oh no. And then editor, you have to make this one. Otherwise you won't be able to see it because it's not complicated enough. So now you have your playfield mesh. And to make sure everything's working, playfield mesh. Press F5, launch table, and you've now got you see these holes that's showing you the background through it. You've now got a play field with holes in it, which you can then carry on and do everything else with. Um, and we'll cover building subways and how to deal with them later on.